Another writer has left the Ray movie? Well, what does that mean for the future of the film? Well, I'm Eric, welcome to the Utini Update, and today, yet another Star Wars screenwriter has left the franchise, the skeleton crew is bringing back the most unlikely face imaginable, Kylo Ren is getting a brand new comic from one of the best in the business, and a fan and favorite villain makes his return in the Battle of Jakku. We've got a bunch to discuss, so hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't, and let's jump right into it. We begin today with some unfortunate news that we definitely didn't expect, but don't worry, there may be a silver lining. Last week, according to Variety, writer Stephen Knight left the upcoming Star Wars film that is set to bring Rey Skywalker back to the franchise. Knight originally signed on to the project back in 2023 after the original departures of writers Damon Lindelof and Justin Britt Gibson, but for whatever reason, it appears that the project just didn't work out at the end between Knight and Lucasfilm. Now, what does this mean for the future of the film? Well, there's plenty that we know, and even more that we don't. Charmino by Chinoy is still set to direct the film, so no changes there, and Daisy Ridley is still on board, even saying last week during an interview on Happy Sad Confused that an update was imminent and that she had already maybe seen some things. And honestly, that's about all we know for sure right now. The film, reportedly surrounding Rey and her building of the next generation of Jedi, was originally slated for a December 2026 release, but depending on where Knight was in the writing process, this move could possibly delay the movie by an entire year, even though Lucasfilm is reportedly already on the hunt for a replacement. The reality, however, is that the carousel of creatives surrounding movies is nothing new, but the publicity of those moves, as far as it pertains to Star Wars, absolutely is. We spoke a few weeks back about another article that posed the question, is Disney bad at Star Wars? And while the overall answer of that was no, there was an undeniable feeling that due to 10 different directors having projects shelved over the last few years, the faith of the fandom is a bit shaky when it comes to movies actually being made. Now, whether Knight's departure is the sign of bigger issues to come or if we're just making something out of nothing, we'll have to wait and see. But does this latest departure make you worried, or do you think this is a problem that's already been resolved? Let us know in the comments down below. Now in confirmed Star Wars project news, we got a bit of a surprise last week courtesy of David Lowry, one of the directors for the upcoming show Skeleton Crew. During the Empire Magazine's director roundtable, Lowry talked about his episode of the series and what he in particular was excited to bring to the Star Wars franchise. As the director of previous family-friendly films like Pete's Dragon and Peter Pan and Wendy, where he actually worked with Jude Law, Lowry is no stranger to working with a young cast, but he confessed that he was most excited about bringing back a rather unusual piece of Star Wars lore the Teak. Now, if the Teak doesn't sound familiar, I can't blame you. This guy was brought into Star Wars in the Battle for Endor, a 1985 made-for-TV Ewok movie, and he hasn't been seen since. He was known for being a bit mischievous and rather quick, but aside from his brief appearance on the Forest Moon, he has remained absent from the history of Star Wars. But for a reason I'm sure we'll discover throughout the show, Lowry brought him into Skeleton Crew and further emphasized how excited he was for the, quote, cognitive dissonance created by having a practical hand puppet playing around on the LED lights of the volume. We'll link to Lowry's full set of comments down below, but it sounds like he's really hitting home the idea of childlike joy when it comes to Skeleton Crew, a notion that's been repeated by the creators ever since the announcement. Now we'll see if the T can become a household favorite once more when his episode airs, and keep an eye out for the rest of Skeleton Crew when the show comes to Disney Plus with a two-part premiere on December 3rd. While the Teak may not be a character many of us remember, we received news last week of someone a bit more familiar that is making his triumphant return to the pages of Marvel Comics. That's right, Kylo Ren himself will be starring in Star Wars Legacy of Vader, an upcoming comic from the legendary Charles Soule and Luke Ross, which will tell the story of Kylo in his Supreme Leader era between episodes 8 and 9. Now, Soul is no stranger to Ben Solo, with his miniseries The Rise of Kylo Ren still being hailed as one of the best Star Wars comics of all time. In an interview with StarWars.com, Soul acknowledged how his work on that book, as well as his lauded Darth Vader series, informed the idea for Legacy of Vader, especially when it came to exploring previously untouched parts of the timeline. In an exclusive look at Soul's first page notes for the new series revealed by Marvel editor Mark Panizia, Soul reinforces just how tumultuous Kylo's life has become in the moments following episode 8. He lost his battle with Luke, failed to destroy the Resistance, fell in love and was rejected by Rey, hey there Raylos, almost killed his mother, recently killed his father, killed Snoke, and became the leader of the First Order. And that is where the series is set to pick up. After donning the mantle and title of Supreme Leader, Kylo will head to Mustafar to uncover his grandfather's secrets within Fortress Vader, before eventually heading to Tatooine for more discoveries about his family's history. 
Fans of Soul know that he remains one of the best comic writers out there, and just by this brief preview, this already may become one of his best. For a full look at Soul's comments about Legacy of Vader, as well as a first look at the interior art for the series, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. Our final story this week also revolves around Star Wars comics, but this time we're looking at the Battle of Jakku, the current series revolving around the final fight of the Galactic Civil War. The 12-issue series is currently being released by Marvel and will act as a transition between Return of the Jedi and the new slate of ongoing comics we will undoubtedly receive next year. However, thanks to an early preview of an upcoming variant cover, we just figured out that a fan-favorite villain has already arrived. Spoilers ahead for the Battle of Jakku. Back in the Battle of Jakku Insurgency Rising number 2, we got to welcome back some great characters like Kes Dameron and Grand Admiral Sloan. But in Sloan's scene specifically, a shadowy figure emerged wearing a particularly fantastic red cape. Fans put together theories about who this man could be almost instantly, and thanks to an upcoming variant by Ramon Rosanas for the Battle of Jakku Republic Under Siege number 4, it looks like that shadowy figure is none other than Gallius Rax. Now, if you haven't heard of Rax before, he was a key antagonist in Chuck Wendig's Aftermath trilogy. Throughout that series, he was crucial to Palpatine's contingency plan and held his own ideals about the future of the Empire, and it looks like we'll get to see some of those plans in person within this series. Personally, the Aftermath series is one of my favorites in all of Star Wars, and the Battle of Jakku series has already been scratching that itch when it comes to big, sprawling, important events in the history of Star Wars. And with the inclusion of Rax confirmed, this series only promises to get more and more epic as issues go on. And that'll do it for this week. An uncertain future for a film combined with a ton of promise on the small screen and the comics page, proving that there is always something to love in this galaxy far, far away. Make sure to keep an eye on utini.com, our social channels, and our plethora of podcasts for everything you need to know in Star Wars. And until next time, may the Force be with you.